This presentation provides the results of a project that was performed in Tennessee uh, where a sinkhole had opened up at a remediation site and electrical resistivity, a surface geophysical method, was used to evaluate the size and shape and extents of this sinkhole feature in the subsurface. So again, this project was in Lenore City, Tennessee and a sinkhole had opened up in a stormwater retention basin that had been constructed as part of a remediation site. And the feature had been filled with sand and rubble at least one time prior to our investigation and that material had since all disappeared down into the sinkhole. So we were contracted to use geophysics to evaluate what exactly was going on in the subsurface. Our approach was to perform a series of 2D stationary resistivity transects across and around the open sinkhole. Uh, the goal was to evaluate the results of these geophysical surveys looking for fractures in the limestone. This was a karst environment. Uh, in indications of collapse zones or flowing soils. Ultimately, we also combined the 2D lines into a three-dimensional model to more accurately evaluate the size and shape of the potential sinkhole features, <clears throat> and then ultimately provide a reason for the collapse that could be used for the client when they were developing a remediation strategy for the sinkhole itself. These are the locations of the resistivity profiles that were performed, uh, four in the east-west direction and five in the north-south direction. Um, you can see in the center here, this red circle is the location of the open collapse feature. And this is just a photograph of one of the resistivity lines in the retention basin. This is an example of the results. And in general, what we're seeing are dry clay soils underlain by a shallow water table. So you move into lower resistance, uh, saturated clay soils, and then at depth uh, around 25 to 30 feet, we get into the limestone unit. And what we saw um, on the transects that were performed surrounding the sinkhole was this kind of break right here in these low resistance clay soils. We see this zone of high resistivity material and we see it again here and again in this profile here. And then as we move further away, uh, we just see stable soils without any of those breaks as we move away from the sinkhole feature. So this was interpreted to be a zone of high resistance sandy soils that was allowing preferential flow of water and then soil and ultimately collapse through this zone. We took all the resistivity profiles, combined them, and generated these areas where it appeared that those higher resistivity sandy soils were present. And we actually identified a second area here, even though there had not been a ground collapse yet, where it looked like the same sort of subsurface conditions existed. The 2D lines were combined into two three-dimensional models to further look at the uh, this collapse zone or this ravel zone of sandy soils. And these are just some of those results. You can see very clearly this is the location of the collapse feature and then directly underneath it and adjacent to it we see these sandy soils that extend down to the limestone unit. And again um, in the north-south direction here, we have this zone of potentially raveling, downward raveling, collapsing soils. 
And over here, as I mentioned before, we had a second location that looked like the exact same conditions were developing um, that we labeled just as a second area of concern. So in summary, um, <clears throat> the resistivity data provided reliable um, information to make geologic interpretations. Uh, we did identify anomalies that originally we were thinking were going to be fractures in the rock, but it turned out that we were really looking at a zone of flowing sandy soils within a clay unit. The three-dimensional analysis just helped to further confirm the exact size and shape and location of those flowing soils. So just a, a very good application of electrical resistivity in a karst environment to delineate uh, flowing and collapsing soils that have resulted in a visible collapse feature at the ground surface.